We can start with issues. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me know when you are when you all are done and you have the list in your screen. I am here. I see. Uh, I see a from somebody. Okay. So uh, starting with the first one in the list, which is number sixty-one. This is. Um, um, let me check. So th this is this is basically um, uh, a, 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 sorry, an issue opened by Carl, and uh, is um, he was proposing one use case, and now he split that into two use cases. So I'm working with him in trying to define them. I'm, I th my impression is that he is still understanding how we define use cases because he was a bit. Uh, um, upset about uh, me asking for questions instead of going directly to metrics. Uh, so basically, I'm working with him on that. So, I said that they have any comment. I, I have nothing specific for this. Then, uh, number 60 is goals for next year. So, we are going to talk about that. Nothing to say. Then, we have this uh, making the Read me consistent with the DNI working group. There is a pull request about that, and, and I want to talk a bit about it. So yeah, we talked about that when you last week a little bit and gave um, gave um, Armstrong some suggestions. I think. Yeah, I know. I was I was looking at the at the recording, and uh, I made some suggestions in the um, in the pull request itself. Uh, my impression is that we are close to it. There are some changes as of today. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe we can just accept it, or, or but but, but let, let's go let's go to it if you want. So it's it's pull request. I'm going to pull requests. It's pull request number uh, eleven. Sorry, num number number uh, fifty eight. And in fact, there is a comment that I didn't saw. I, I basically my, my my last comment was asking for how the comments were addressed because I was looking at at many of them, but not all. And uh, let me go to the end, to the end, to the end, to the end. Okay. Yeah, Sean gave me instructions like last time and help how to address the issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the structure was done. Now the thing was the content because I was not very familiar with the, like I was not at the very beginning to understand. That's why I said I needed help on the content of what should go on like to fill the introduction and that background thing. Okay, no, that's fine. What I was asking for was how the different changes were addressed, because otherwise it's difficult to uh, find out which ones can be closed. Because the, the, this is just a general note on how to work with pull requests. So okay. when when somebody comes and open a revision, usually uh, we made a comment and we say, "I would like to see this fixed," for example. And your answer okay. can be your answer can be perfectly, I, "I cannot fix that. Sorry about that. I need help here." But but if there is no answer. Basically, we don't know if you don't agree with the review or you didn't see it for any reason, or, or maybe yeah. you already addressed it with some, some change that we didn't notice. So uh, that's, that's all that I was asking for. I, I, I see what you mean. I yeah. think the one other issue was the structure of the file because in some bent uh, recommendations, like the structure requires that structure. So I did the three uh, command. Mm -hmm. Then I actually deleted some many files, just kept the, the ones that I thought were like, okay, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. But the thing I didn't do was uh, to explain the repository and things like that, as I saw from your comments. I've not yet done that one, but I just, I was thinking that in the uh, meeting today, like now, we can mm -hmm. now go through and say, okay, uh, if okay. this the structure is required or not. With respect to the general structure, I completely agree with you. So there, I think there are some sections that, are, that basically doesn't apply to this because this is not code. And right. since it is not code, for instance, there are no command line instructions or, or stuff like that. So I agree with that. Uh, with respect to the other, to the, I mean, answering the comments by reviewers, it's just a matter of convenience because it's much, much easier to see uh, how the review is progressing if we can close some comments and the usual way of proceeding is basically you as the submitter see a comment by the reviewer, then usually you decide whether you want or you can address it or not, and you just comment on what you are doing. And what you are doing, maybe I cannot fix this, I'm sorry, but I cannot, I need help, or, or, or I don't agree with you, it can also be a, a feasible answer. 
that the okay, import- I didn't know that. Okay, no, so I know. I go back, should I go like on the comment and make some some comments yeah. you need? Okay, perfect. So if you want, we can work with this during today and tomorrow. Yeah, and yeah and we can do it. We can process. do that today. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So Thank I. You. I I wait for your comments and then we, we can try to close this and probably accept it as it is. Okay. And then we can do a new iteration on it, right? Okay. Yep. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. That's a good plan. Okay, so let's go back to issues then. And uh, we already saw uh, preparing the Google Summer of Code proposal. This is basically the same thing, it's still sitting there, but nothing to do for now, I think. Then yep. number so, number until January. That's forever. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so then number um, fifty use case community managers. Uh, so seeing this is on the roof. So we're we'll just waiting for you have to have time. Then number forty eight. Uh, this is another use case by Cal. This is the other one. So uh, I'm working with him. So nothing else to say. Number 44, refine code development focus area. Here I have a new pull request that I can tell you right now because I just uploaded it. I, I didn't have time before that. I'm sorry for, for being so close to the meeting. So right. now we can review it in a moment. So the next one, use case with, uh, uh, with Ray about efficiency. Basically, we are moving forward. There is a new pull request. I'm going to show you it now too. And then the last two use issues, uh, I think um, we, we can forget about them for now. So if you don't have questions about issues, we can move to pull requests. No, I, I, uh, I merged. The, I think your pull request is good. Okay. With Ray, the 65. So yeah, let's move the pull requests. I just close one. Okay. Focus areas one. Okay, then, then uh, 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 let me check just a second. So you said that you uh, were closing, okay, the refining code development focus areas, okay, perfect. Yeah. So uh, if uh, just a comment, uh, when I was trying to, to, to do it, um, what I found is that in the current structure that we have now, so if you look at the file and you look at the changes that I, that I did, um, I think first of all that we need tags. So if you see one of the things that they have included is a tag for each of the goals, because then we need to refer them in the, in the questions. Uh, we need something like observations or notes or something because we need to put a context. For instance, in the case of this goal, we need a time period. We need to specify we're referring only to code and so on. So this is a new, let's say, uh, section or whatever that we didn't have in the template. But maybe we should include it for all the focus areas. Yeah. Which pull request are you looking at, Jesus? Yeah, it's number uh, sorry, number 65, 65, which is not in the list of open of open uh, requests. Okay, all right. Yeah, it was just accepted, so it's in the one in the list of closed. Okay. So sixty five. Okay. So uh, then in the in 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 the section on questions and metrics, what I did was structure it according to goals. So the idea would be for each of the goals we would define in the questions, and for each of the questions we would define in the metrics. And then, um, including in the, the definition of the of the metrics, the, the parameters that we need. So for us, for, for now, it could be only period, which would be the period of time that we are considering, but maybe we can get more sophisticated in the future. And uh, something important, I'm trying to, to, to focus on generic names. So for instance, instead of commits, I'm using changes, because that could better apply to other systems that maybe are not using commits, but any other thing of, for, for tracking changes. So I'm, I'm trying to use generic names. So this can have an impact on the names, on the naming that we are using for uh, the metrics. So something similar happens with uh, um, um, code reviews, for instance, because I'm talking about proposals instead of uh, merge request or pull request or, or patch, which are the different names that they use in GitHub, GitLab, and, and Gerrit. So um, think a bit about this, um, uh, all of you. Because my, my impression is that, that for the names of the metrics, we should keep generic names. And then in the mapping section of each metric saying, if this is for GitHub, this corresponds to pull requests, for instance. If this is for GitLab, this corresponds to merge, to merge uh, questions. And if this corresponds to Garrett, this is a patch or something like that. Because otherwise the naming is going to be platform dependent and that could be a problem. 
So that's my proposal anyway. Think about it, we can discuss further. Okay. Uh, is this pull request 65? Yeah. Are you describing things that you want to change in 65 or are you things that are committed? Because I'm trying to track what you're saying to what's in the pull request. Okay, in, in 65, if you go to the section on questions and metrics, and you yeah. look at the plus, at the plus signs, I mean, things that I added, yeah. you can see how, for, a, um, for instance, for efficiency, I'm using as the name of the metric proposal duration. If you look at the corresponding metric that we have now in the list of metrics, that is, there is a very similar metric, which is, um, uh, um, let, let me remember, it's um, no, a proposal, uh, pull, pull, request, pull request direction or, or something like that. Because the, the, the naming in GitHub is pull request, right? But the problem is that the naming in GitHub is pull request, the naming in GitLab is merge request, the naming uh, in Garrett is patch. Okay, so. So I that's mean, why I'm, I think we could just, I mean, one thing might be just to say that, you know, to, to elaborate on that concrete implementation in the definition mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So people know that, for example, the four examples you provide make it much more clear what's meant by proposals. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, if I, like I know from what you're telling me what you mean by proposals, but I, I don't yeah, know. In, in, in the question, question you, you say it says it's considering proposal for changes. Uh, which is the usual way that developers uh, refer to them. But I agree that maybe maybe people don't realize that it corresponds to pull requests in GitHub, for instance. So maybe what we can do is to include in the question itself the name, for instance, for example, in the case of GitHub, this is a pull request. So that we keep the generic name, but we explain it a bit so that people can realize. What do you think? So uh, I have a comment. This is Matt. So first oh. of all, yep. Hey, I've heard this many times. A, a request for this, Jesus. So I mean, mm -hmm. I appreciate you you doing this. Um, I also I also think that going towards the generic names is a better idea than those specific to GitHub, and then specifying what that generic name is in Garrett or GitHub or GitLab. Um, so I I fully agree with you. I guess that's what what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And, and we have members, right? We have members of this community uh, from GitLab. Uh, yeah. And so I think, I think we need to be attentive to that. So yeah. I like it. It'll, it'll require a change in the metrics repository. Exactly. So the, the main implication is that the names of many metrics are going to change. Yeah. Because if you look at the names that we have now, most of them are platform dependent. Yep. No, I agree. Um, that, that's not too much trouble. Especially if yeah, I know. It is not. Yeah. So it's a matter of being a bit careful with that, but that, that's only that. Yeah, no, I, I totally plus one. That's a good idea. Okay. So, and, and the other thing uh, that I wanted to uh, um, take your attention to is basically the structure of the question and metric section. Uh, as I said, it is now hierarchical. So it's based on the list of goals. For each of the goals, the list of questions, and for each of the questions, the list of metrics. So that in the end, we would ha we would always have a metric in a context. So that we, we no longer have, if you look at the legacy metrics below, you can see that before this, we had metric and the question for the metric. So uh, this basically um, makes it the other way around. So the important thing is the goal and the question. And then base it on a specific goal in question, we get a list of metrics and not the other way around. So this is, should be consistent with the top-down approach that we and, and diversity and inclusion too are, are using. Can you say that one more time? Yeah, uh, in, instead of having, if, if, uh, it's better if you go, uh, if you look at the patch, at the bottom of the patch, you can uh, unfold the old version where it starts with legacy metrics and questions, you have an icon on the left there where you can unfold yep. and see the previous version. And if you look at the previous version, what we had in a table was the name of the metric and the question for that metric, right? What I've done now is doing it the other way around so that what we have is a hierarchy of, of goal, question, metric. So that if you look at my chains a bit of both, you have goal activity, 
for goal activity, you have a list of questions. Right now, there is only one, but there should be uh, two or three. I guess so. Yeah. The, the, the questions for addressing this goal. And then the list of metrics for answering this question. Yep, no, I agree. Which means that every time we see a metric, we always see it in the context of a hierarchy, goal, question, metric, so that you always know why this metric is here. Yep, no, I agree. And I think that'll fit better too as particular metrics end up uh, being able to answer a variety of different questions, perhaps, or mm -hmm. address a variety of different goals. I like this approach. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically think a bit about it. If nobody objects, what I'm going to do is to include this into the template for, the, for, the, for this, so that we do it always. Okay. And, and, and that's all from my side with this uh, pull request. So any comment or something? No, I understand it. Oh, that's good. Okay, good. Then uh, we have um, another small pull request that I see that's seen already accepted. It's just a matter of structuring. This is number 64. It's just a matter of structuring the repository. So I think we are on the same page, so nothing to say. And then for the two that are still open, the first one is um, uh, trying to add metrics to the array use case. And again, this is important because it's the first time that we are adding metrics to a use case. So there is no need of uh, talking about this now. So just have a look at it. If you have comments, we can talk in the pull request. And what, I, what I try to do is to capture what Ray was saying in the form of, um, of the structure that we had. So it's a matter of including some of the questions and uh, and, and, and some of the metrics. Does it include it. A goal? Do these use cases kind of follow that same structure too? I mean, I suppose I could look. Um, but about the kind of the goal, question, and then metric? It's quite similar, but it's not exactly the same. I mean, we can, we can go to the other, to the other uh, question, but the thing is that usually the, the use cases are going to have only one goal, maybe more, yeah. but it's more useful that they have just one goal. Yep, sure. And when they, have, when they have several goals, usually the goals are interrelated because the, the, the person proposing the use change doesn't need to do the, let's say, the, 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 the thought process of trying to find out what's different, what's the same, and, and so on. So usually goals can, goals can uh, in, in, the back, in the back of, of goals. And, and then questions are related to all of those. So that's why I'm not making the difference between all of this, but I try to map every uh, metric to a goal, to a, to a question, sorry. Every metric to a question, yep, okay. Yeah. Within the yeah. use within so in the, any case, sorry, within? Within, within the use case, is that what you mean? Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Okay, good. And it'd so, be nice if we have, it, I think it'd be nice just from a parallel structure perspective, if the questions that are in the, um, that are in the use cases are the same questions that we see in the focus areas? So to some extent, I think so. I agree with that. Uh, my impression is that we shouldn't be too, uh, um, let's say, um, demanding on the use cases. So that even yeah. if they are not very well formulated or something like that, questions should be uh, accepted from the point of view that we need people submitting use cases. If they are understandable, that's, that's good enough. Okay. Maybe we can try to refine the question into something more specific or something like that when we are dealing with that into the focus area. Okay, so yeah, so maybe it's just a, a point of checking when the use case is submitted that the question yeah. that we're asking may or may not be related to questions that we already have. Yeah, yeah. so, so my, my, my personal idea uh, is yes to try to lower the barrier as much as possible for accepting use cases so, so that we really have a good collection of use cases. Yeah, because no, I, we, can, we can always have time to improve them later. Okay, so the, the, the workflow on the use case is that the person submitting the use case can really kind of post pose any, any question they would like. Whatever. Exactly. Okay, okay. okay. Exactly. And, and the only thing is that if we very clearly see, okay, it's a better way of saying this like, like this or something like that, well, of course we can suggest. Okay. But that would be only, only from the point of view of making the questions more clear not okay. necessarily of making them aligned with the questions that we have in, in, the, in, the, in the focus areas. Fair enough. And I suppose we'd have to be very careful to suggesting that people rephrase their questions because then it may yeah. no longer be the question. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool, thanks. 
Okay, so nothing else to say with respect to this pull request except to uh, have a look at it. And if you uh, uh, agree with it, we can start to use also it uh, as, as the template for, for the next uh, um, cases. And then uh, the other one is the uh, structural changes to the readme that we already talked about. So nothing else from my side about pull request or issues. No, no that's fine. I think we're good to go. Okay. Talk about 2019 strategic planning. Yeah, let's go. Sin, if you want to go to, to present the issue. I think, I think um, the first thing that you and I discussed, Jesus, um, and I guess maybe there's some stuff written in the issue is what you're saying. Yeah. Is it an issue? So the, there is a link to the uh, to the Google um, document. Yeah. Right? I'm sorry. I'm looking at the issues. I meant, I meant no, it's, it's in issue sixty. Oh, all right. It, I'm sorry. There, I, 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 clicked, I clicked on the wrong thing. Yeah. Here. And there is the document with the goals for next year. <clears throat> yes. So in any case, just in summary, as I said in the in the comment in the issue, I already agree with the main goals. And uh, so what I was proposing, in fact, was maybe to uh, fill in the, the problem statement, mission and risks, if you want, and um, propose this as a pull request so that we can include that into a file into the repository to have it there so that everybody knows as a kind of a roadmap or something for the next year. Um, looking at goal two, fully implemented focus areas. So one to top, one top to bottom. By right, chaos con. Those are the the so the two specific objectives under goal two. I like because they give us timelines and priorities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to know a little bit more. Before, I mean, I guess, so I have some questions about how to, I mean, I think we should elaborate on some of the goals, but I'm good with doing the problem statement first. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, from, from my point of view, for, the, for the, the first focus area, which is the one that we are trying to commit to do the half for, for, for the next chaos gun, that would be code development, and I'm, I'm trying to push it. So right now we are discussing uh, questions and metrics. So hopefully we can finish the discussion on the general structure of question and metrics uh, during the next week, or, okay. maybe, uh, or maybe during, during this month, if not. And in January, we should be uh, working with the metrics themselves. Yeah, and I, I don't have edit access to this document, so I can't do anything with it. Oh, with this document, the, the, the Google document? Yeah. I don't know oh. who owns it. I don't own it. Who, who owns it? Who has started it's a, it? It's a, it's a public document. You should be able to get there just through the link. Right, but I can't edit it. I had to request oh. edit access, so whoever owns it needs to approve. Oh, I'm sorry. My edit yeah. access. That was my point. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't I will, quite, uh, I will I didn't change that. Uh, Okay, I see I cannot edit it either. Because I was just going to start like trying to iterate while we're sitting here on a problem statement. And I don't know, I would characterize the problem as there are, I mean, in the growth maturity and decline space, there are a number of metrics that are widely used and understood, but they lack, uh, they're, they're implemented in various nuanced and difficult to navigate ways. And so I think one of the, the principal problem statement for our group is to shepherd existing metrics on growth maturity and decline and create standard definitions of them and where possible or necessary elaborate new metrics for growth maturity and decline. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and try to edit it now. Yeah, let's, I guess I don't need to worry about it right now. Uh, I don't know if I need to open my browser. Yet. I don't. It does. It still says view only. So. <clears throat> okay. Here, I'm gonna drop a new link in. 
in where you're dropping it into? Uh, the I'll put it into the issue. So, so while, while you're doing this, I have a one comment that I'd like to make. And I think this has come up a couple times. So Sean, if you want to finish your thought, you can, but I, I was going to chime in while you were being quiet. Yeah, go for it. So also, I think there's a problem statement with growth, maturity, and decline in the sense that every metric seems to fall into growth, maturity, and decline. So, and I think Jesus has brought this up before that, when in doubt, give it to growth, maturity, and decline. For the garbage can. Yeah, so I think one of the, the things that needs to come of 2019 is kind of clearly articulating what the GMD space is. You know what I mean? And telling people that if there's a new metric that needs to be tossed in, telling them to go take a hike because it doesn't fit. This isn't the, this isn't the current scope of GMD. And... So I, that was kind of my thought. I was thinking about this because I, I, I want to I want to see growth, maturity, and decline, and D and I move forward through this stuff of through the implementation. But right. I, but if if it gets too unwieldy and they have like forty focus areas with with no. ninety with ninety metrics no. each, it gets to be really impossible to move. Forward. No, my, my my main concern is with people power. So they. If we are going to have more focus area, that's fine, but we need more people working them. So that's why either we decide that for now we are not working with all the focus areas, which is the case, yep. or we have more people leading some of the other focus areas. So that, that's what, the only thing that I'm worried about. So I don't mind having 10 focus areas if we have people working in all of them. Okay. But right now, the problem is that we are just a few people and we need to focus, otherwise we are not going to deliver anything. <laughs> yeah, right. So I think it's just maybe the, the, for 2019, it's just defining what the current space of growth, maturity, and decline is. Very clearly and articulate. Yeah. Uh, um, alternatively, it could also be defining the priorities for which focus areas should be done during the year. Okay. And, uh, and, and that would be good enough. I mean, uh, if we can define these are the focus areas for the group, that's well as well. That, that, that's good as well. So... I, I find both both uh, solutions good. Okay. Either yeah, I think both provide bounds of some sort. Yeah. Which I think is gonna, is that's what's kind of necessary. Yeah. Yeah. So make the boundaries of the GMD focus area more clear and specific. Yeah, and then perhaps does that fit under grow work group, work group or does that fit as its own goal? I don't know. It's just it, maybe it's kind of a goal for me. Yeah, like a top level. And to Jesus's point, we can, you know, still capture the conversation of things that may reside in GMD, but the, that's just not where we're at right now, or that's just not the current focus. I think that was your point, Jesus. Yeah. So the, it would be good enough to say this is the, the, the order, the priority for the different goals, and probably that should be then, uh, I mean, for, for the different focus areas, and from my point of view, that should be then based on the interests of the people participating in the working group. And that's it. So if yeah. somebody else comes and proposes a new uh, focus area and the focus area seems sensible, yep. we can accept it. But uh, we can uh, at the same time say, okay, that's fine. That seems to, to fit into, into GMD. But right now there is nobody leading it. So for now it's going to be in the attic. So nobody is going to work with it until somebody raises his hand and says, I want to lead this. Right. Okay. Um, I think that's the goal with risk, right? to get Kate involved. Well, yeah. and I think, I think, I think like, um, so I would separate the need for the sort of work group coordinative functioning, like these meetings, which I think risk and value could still, can, could still share. Although I think risk is going to need to create a working group meeting time focused on that emphasis area for later in the day so that the Asian continent can participate. So, but I would like to not necessarily split off and create new working group administration. Like, I think it's good to have the risk working group in a separate part of the repository, maybe at some point, 
and have the actual development of those metrics emerge in a related area at some point. But I'm thinking in terms of the administration of another working group, like I don't want to add the administration of another working group right now. No, I'm, I'm happy with having risk, having a separate meeting or something yeah. like that, if, if, if that's needed. Uh, the only thing is, if we are going to be in the same repository and in the same, let's say, general area, we need to discuss the, the, the structure and stuff like that, but nothing else. Right. In fact, this can be completely autonomous. Uh, probably at some point, if that's something that is still to be done, we need to decide uh, how is the consensus we've been sure that all of us agree with reading in all the focus areas. But for now, I see uh, more of this as a problem of writing things and not of, uh, let's say, reviewing things. Because up to now, what we need is the, the fourth into structuring and all of that, and not necessarily in doing the review. That, that can come later. Yeah, I agree. Now, uh, thinking again about the goals, I would like to make uh, the, the getting more use cases as a specific goal. Because right now, I realize it's not there. Could be related to the goal number four, but maybe it's good to have it as a separate goal so that it's, it's more explicit that we won't use cases. So what do you think? So what is the distinction between wanting more use cases and making focus areas consistent with use cases? So when you say make focus areas consistent with use cases, I don't know what's in there. So I, I, I didn't write that, but I assume that that means that uh, when we are getting more and more use cases, we should be uh, keeping an eye on them to make sure that the focus area are consistent with them. I mean, they are delivering what the use cases need to some extent. I think that, but I didn't write that. So maybe. So, who, who so those, those goals, those goals come specifically from the, the meeting uh, where okay. we, where we introduced them. So that's based on, based on things that were said during the meeting. Okay. Where we initially talked about goals. No, no, I'm, I'm, maybe I missed that meeting or maybe I. Oh, you were there. Yeah, okay. Maybe I don't remember. I don't remember what we meant by make focus areas consistent with use cases because focus areas, a focus area contain, can, may contain one or more use cases, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, when, when it says consistent, I don't understand that this should be a direct mapping from one to one, but that uh, when we are writing the, the, the focus area, we should be having to account the use cases that could be relevant for that focus area. So that if we see that people are interested in such and such questions, we ensure that those questions are addressed by the, by the, by the focus area. But not, nothing more than that. So do you agree? Is that what you have in mind too? I think, so I think that it's each focus area should, should develop a set of um, uh, uh, actor goal lists, essentially. I mean, when I've done this before, like an actor goal list is essentially an enumeration of loose ca use cases or a list of use cases that need to be developed. Would, would no, that help develop the boundaries better? Yeah, to some extent, from, so from my point of view, use cases came from users and therefore they are real and they have uh, blurry boundaries they are difficult to define precisely because they, that's, that's life. That's what people need in the trenches. Right. Somehow. While, while the focus area should be a structure, it should be a much more thought. They should be well-defined. So that's why I think that use cases should inform how we write uh, the, the focus areas, but uh, there is no direct mapping between them. So we can, for instance, ignore a use case if we think it doesn't fit a, a focus area for some reason. Uh, on the other hand, we should consider them and not just uh, uh, not just ignore them because we want, but just because there is a reason for that. But um, I, I see them at two different uh, spaces. So use cases are in the real world somehow, and that's what people specifically want or are doing with metrics. And um, and the, our structure, what tries to do is to structure the space of GMD by saying these are the metrics, these are the <coughs> You know, usually goals should be consistent with use cases, but, but not necessarily. So, but that, that's my, my view. So we can, we can discuss, of course. So, so my code contributions is a focus area, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have, I think there are several use cases that 
are relevant under that area. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so when I say make cons the focus areas consistent with use cases, it's actually to me kind of the question is how to make the use cases be, how to identify what use cases fall under the umbrella of each focus area. And mm -hmm. so if I was taking a focus area and wanting to sort of create a boundary around it and try to understand it and explore it, one of the first things I might do is just create a list of potential use cases, which I've called actor goal lists at other times. And then that way the, the focus area is trying is sort of proactively defining its boundaries. But I think that for, uh, use cases, at least how I, how I see them, um, should be as much real as possible. Yeah. Either, because, either because some person says, this is my use case, or because we know, because we have interviewed other people, or, or just we know because we are also users of the metrics. Uh, from some point of view, the, the, the use cases are like the, 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 the lab notes, so, or, or the, let's say the, the, the notes that a, bi a biologist gets when going to, going to the nature and seeing different birds, for instance, and taking notes of the different birds I'm seeing in the reality. But then I need to go to my lab and I start doing a hierarchy of a species or whatever, and that's how I structure everything that I saw in nature. So the use cases are like uh, what's happening in nature, what's happening in the reality, and then we need to structure that into a hierarchy that makes sense. And uh, that means that we need to have use cases into account, but that doesn't mean that use cases come directly into uh, our hierarchy of uh, goals, questions, so, and So I would also say that there, the, another example is um, I know a certain number of things that exist that, that are inside of my category of a, of a use case. So a use, so I think what you're saying is use case doesn't need to be bounded in a focus area that can emerge in the wild, like a scientific observation does, and then be classified under mm -hmm. a focus area. Once it becomes clear what focus area it belongs to, I think it's also mm -hmm. true that we know which trees are deciduous and which trees are not. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Too. There's okay. some use cases that, like, especially in growth maturity and decline, like, we just know. Mm -hmm. And we could make a list of those candidate use cases, and that those candidate use cases then may inspire people to make contributions. Yeah, that's fine. So th that's why I said in many cases we already know about use cases, even if no real let's say real user camps and tell us because we have been working in the field for, for a while and we know the kind of questions that many people need for different reasons. So I completely agree with writing use cases ourselves in those cases. And, and, and probably those cases are going to be very much aligned with the focus areas because we know about the focus areas too and we can structure the, the use case much more. So in, in, in short, I would say having a specific goal for having more use cases both, let's say, real from real users and our use cases, and then try to make the focus area uh, as much consistent with those use cases as possible, as reasonably possible, because we know that the focus area should be more structured than all of them. Okay. Yeah, I agree with what you are writing. All right. I'm going to include uh, while you uh, while you write. I'm going to write on goal five. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Okay, look at the goal number five and see if you agree with what I wrote.
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, then uh, for the goal number three, I would be needing some, some clarification because I don't, I, I'm not sure I fully understand what this refers to. Goal three system says, so we have, um, once upon a time we showcased a dashboard that we built out for Augur that just shows the, it brings in all of the activities and metrics that are defined in our worker repository okay. and shows the implementation status. Now, right now it's just the implementation status in Augur and I think we want to generalize, we want to have some kind of general way of showing people where the concrete implementations in Augur and Grimoire Lab are, because that's okay. the places where mm -hmm. those things exist in, real, in reality right now. But here you, you refer to having, uh, let's say, uh, okay, I see. Okay, uh, um, a part of this is the reference implementations that you, we should be writing in implementations directory, mm -hmm. which are those uh, oh, notebooks. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, show the, show the reference implementations, I agree. Uh, no, but, but I understand God, what you mean is trying to show also that either in, in, uh, in Grimoire Lab or in Augur or in both, some of the metrics are already defined too. Well, so I, think, you, I think showing the reference implementation, yeah. Um, I think having a link that people can look at for the reference implementation is similarly helpful. Okay, no, but, but they agree that both things are, are helpful in the sense that the reference implementation is going to be, let's say, pretty basic. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the case of uh, Augur and Grimoire Lab, you can see the metrics in a context uh, where right. there are some of the metrics and stuff. So I, I agree with both things. So maybe we can say concrete implementations of chaos metrics in, uh, let's say, in, uh, in Augur and Grimoire. Sorry. Oops. So something like that. Sorry, so reasonably possible. And also reference implementations in the implementations directory. Both things, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I think this is, yeah, I agree with all of this. So. Mm -hmm. mm. <clears throat> Maybe we can just change the order to show what's more important because uh, maybe uh, um, goal number two should be number one because from my point of view, we should have fully implemented focus areas first. Yeah. Or, or maybe, maybe not first, but... Um, I'm, I, I have no trouble moving them around and putting them in some kind of priority order. Um, fully implemented focus areas. Two, two and one, I mean, I think you can work from both directions. Yeah. So, I well, mean, I don't care what well, are. well, whatever. So I, I, would, I would put goal number two as goal number one, but still uh, doesn't matter too much. So we can discuss later if you want to, whatever. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, maybe the order is not that important anyway. Um, it, what's risks? Who's typing risks? Kevin, what are you saying there? Oh, Kevin. hello, Kevin, are you talking? Here. Oh, I just, uh, I just dropped the mission uh, in. So that's why the cursor is there. I wasn't typing in risk. Oh, is risks already there? No, there's no risk. Okay, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the Google Doc. I'm seeing the heading risks, which I didn't see before. Oh yeah, risk risk was there. The heading risk was there. I did okay. not put any text in risk. 
Uh, uh, okay. The reason the reason my cursor is there is because I just dropped text into the mission statement above it. Okay. All right. Sorry. I'm trying to track on the, the document as it. Okay. Hmm. So what do we want? Do you want to reorder them, Jesus, or? Uh, I really don't mind that much. So um, it's just a matter of uh, if if some people comes and, and and see this, maybe it's better that they see first the number, the goal number two, because it it says more clearly what we are going to do. Of course, it's also in the context of goal number one. So uh, uh, really, uh, I, I I'm I'm not going to make uh, an issue of this or whatever you may prefer. I think I think two. Yeah, I mean I I think. Let's let's put goal two up above goal one and change their numbers. I, I agree with that. I was just trying to understand it. I wasn't I wasn't like questioning it like questioning it like it was a good idea or not. It was more wanting to make sure I understood what we were trying to do. Mm. And now I'm getting it. Okay. So goal three. And also, just from from that point of view, maybe goal five should be before goal four, because I think I'm, I think uh, growing the working group should be, from some point of view, a consequence of all the other four goals. I can, yeah, but I, I think there is precedent there. To so I agree with keeping growing the working group as a specific goal because we need to do that too. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's a bit of a consequence of the others. Okay. Uh, I need to, to leave in a moment, I'm sorry, but I cannot uh, stay until the end of the meeting. So do you have any other issue that you want to discuss with me? No, um, I think maybe we should, I guess next week is the 26th. Do we want to cancel next week's meeting? Oh, okay. Yes, uh, I I need to cancel it because I'm I cannot join on twenty six. I'm going to move. Yeah, I'm I'm similarly like uh, family yeah. time. So uh, none of the other meetings are meeting until like January seventh, eighth. Yeah, that's my case. I'm I'm looking at the calendar, and for January the second, I'm not sure, but very likely I cannot join either. No, so I'd say I, let's move it to that. Uh, let's yeah. move meeting to the January. Yeah, January the 9th. Yeah, January 9th. Take a two week hiatus. Yeah. Is that okay with all of you? Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. It's an excellent idea. Okay. Is, so there there anything, is there anything specific we want to add to the agenda for, for that January 9th meeting that, that's not already covered? I would say we uh, want to try to maybe finish up these goals and objectives. Yeah, and uh, and I would also like to have a version of the a complete version of the first uh, of sorry, uh, eco development. So we can include that specifically. Maybe it's not going to be completely ready, but should be close to, because uh, there are only two more weeks until cash comes home. You said. Do you want to you want to discuss the uh, a first full implementation? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, maybe not the metrics completely implemented, but um, a, a number of the metrics should be implemented, and the general structure should be complete, so that we can discuss and hopefully approve it, and then we can for the next of the month work on the metrics themselves, so that we can uh, announce at the Cascon the first version of the of a focus area, which is sort of complete. Okay. It is one of our goals for ChaosCon. Yeah. Okay, then if you have nothing else, I, I'm, I must leave. Happy, happy end you. of the year, everybody. See you in 2019. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you. Bye.